Hey guys, so uh, if you are wondering why I am wearing this incredibly stylish bow tie, uh, there is no particular reason other than that I haven't really tied one for a few months and I just wanted to make sure that I remembered how to do it. So uh, as you can see, uh, it's a little bit wonky, it's a little, you know, my technique's a little bit off, but uh, I can sort of remember the gist of it. Um, so anyway, today I'm going to be talking about something which people on the internet have been talking about for seemingly eons, and that is which is the better web browser, Google Chrome or Firefox. Now, of course, there are a plethora of other browsers out there, uh, but I'm going to be talking about the two big ones today. Of course, I'm going to be omitting Internet Explorer because, well, it's pretty much got to the stage now where not even Microsoft wants you to use Internet Explorer. I remember installing Windows 7 on my PC where I play games and do a lot of the multimedia stuff, and when I uh, cracked open Internet Explorer, I, I believe it even suggested that I used either Firefox or Google Chrome. And, and, and when a browser is perhaps recommending that you use other browsers in its place, you know that it at least doesn't have the confidence uh, in its abilities. So anyway, the two most commonly used browsers, Google Chrome and Firefox. Out of those two, Google Chrome is the most widely used in the vast majority of countries, but there are one or two exceptions. Now, uh, right off the bat, as you guys know, I am a big advocate for open source uh, software development, and there is only one of those two browsers which is open source, and that is Firefox. However, there is a little bit of a caveat to that statement. If you are a Linux user, as I know a great deal of you are, uh, a lot of Linux distributions come bundled by default in the repositories, but not often included in the uh, initial out-of-the-box uh, software uh, selection, uh, is a browser called Chromium. Now, Google uh, and the developers of Google Chrome uh, release the source code for the majority of the Google Chrome browser called Chromium, uh, which uh, is, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, the fully functioning version of Google Chrome minus, I think it's a PDF viewer and the uh, Flash plugin. And the reason why they don't include that is because of, I believe it's licensing and legal issues rather than any kind of technical thing. Um, so uh, Chromium is what's bundled with a lot of Linux distributions in the repositories, meaning that there is an open source version of Google Chrome effectively, which does pr pretty much the exact same thing bar those two things that I just mentioned. So um, if not both, of course, but, uh, both browsers have an open source component to them. Uh, so um, I've got an article here on my tablet, uh, which is from Lifehacker. Now, Lifehacker is a pretty decent website when it comes to like general overviews of stuff, but I do find they omit a lot of information. But I'm going to quickly go through some of the things that they say about each of the different browsers, and then I'm going to add some of my own thoughts to it. Okay, so it says here, and by the way, Lifehacker have taken uh, various quotes from people um, that they've interviewed, basically. So the first um, point is Chrome is more polished, Firefox is more customizable. Um, whereas this is broadly a correct statement, I would say that now um, Firefox is about as polished as it needs to be anyway. Um, so I'd say from an aesthetic point of view, I, I would put them at even, really. Um, Maybe Chrome is a little bit more polished in terms of its um, its feel, and it's certainly sort of... But yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know, there's not really much in it. Firefox is definitely more customizable, but that's not to say that Google Chrome isn't customizable. It's very customizable as well. And I think a lot of the problems we're going to have with, it, with this discussion is that... Um, a lot of what Firefox can do, Google Chrome can do, and a lot of what Google Chrome can do, Firefox can do. Uh, Chrome is better for developers. That's what it says here just from this quote from this one person. So that's not like an absolute statement. Again, um, I, I'm not a developer myself, but I've seen developers pretty happily developing for both. Um, I think the developers that they say here are website developers. And, you know, I've developed more than my fair share of websites before. And for all I, you know, to be honest, they're, they're, they're again, pretty evenly stacked. Uh, both of them um, it, it's always been Internet Explorer. That's the one that web developers have always had the problem with. And even since IE9, things have even improved in the Internet Explorer corner. So, um, and people don't even, like, I mean, I don't even test for Internet Explorer anymore. I, like, I don't do not nearly as much web development as I used to. Okay, another point that Lifehacker makes. Firefox has better extensions. Um, all of the big extensions and all of the most important extensions are available for both browsers. Um, but with that in mind, I have seen um, add-ons that uh, run on Firefox but not Chrome, and add-ons that work on Chrome and not Firefox. Um, but I have never had a task um, 
that required an add-on that wasn't available in one capacity or another in each browser. So again, um, based on the add-ons, and they both have um, browser stores. Now there is a caveat to mention here when it comes to Google Chrome, is that Google Chrome um, only allow you to install add-ons from the Chrome store. Now, I don't think that's the case with Chromium, the open source variant of Google Chrome. I think you can install any browser add-ons as long as you've got the actual downloaded binary file. Um, that being said, though, even on Google Chrome, I think you can put it into developer mode, and then I think you can install um, add-ons that aren't in the Chrome store. That's a bit clunky. That's not something I'd ever recommend a newbie or a casual uh, computer user to do. Um, and Google Chrome do it for, as I understand, security reasons rather than anything else. And that is, again, um, uh, you know, like that's that's a decision that I can respect. When it comes to Firefox, Firefox does have a, um, a Firefox add-on store as well. I don't know how well it's curated, but I've never had a problem with it before. Um, Firefox does seem to be sort of quite aware of security and, 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 and issues like that as well, but then so do Chrome. But then again, of course, add-ons can always, uh, malicious add-ons, I guess, could you know, in theory, possibly exist in, in, in either browser as well. Um, but again, when it says when it comes to extensions, I would say that they're they're at a push. They're 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 about even. You can do what pretty much whatever you want. At least I've always found that in both browsers. Um, now it says here Chrome offers better syncing capabilities, uh, and I'm probably going to completely write this one off. Um, and there is an, a, 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 a sort of an added note, an addendum to this particular point, is that Firefox Sync, which is a service uh, which syncs um, your bookmarks and add-ons and so forth in Firefox, um, which is which is a reasonably recent development, basically puts Firefox on a par with Google Chrome when it comes to syncing up all your bookmarks. If you don't know what I mean by that, basically I'm, um, it means if you um, add a bookmark um, on Google Chrome, uh, then that means that your that very same bookmark will be available if you logged on to your uh, if if you synced up with a different computer or if you synced it up with your mobile device, you'd still be able to access your same set of bookmarks. So um, Firefox can do that, Google Chrome can do that. It's an incredibly handy tool, and it's probably a deal maker or breaker for me. But again, both browsers can do it, and both browsers can do it pretty easily as well. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, Firefox offers better privacy. Um, yes. Um, again, privacy, and when we talk about on online privacy, it, it's a comprehensive issue, it's a complicated issue, and we always have to sort of make the point, privacy from whom? Uh, is it privacy from, say, um, government spying? Is it privacy from uh, corporations uh, checking your browsing history? Um, is it privacy from uh, people who might be like friends and family of associates uh, finding out something that you don't want to, them to find out about? Is it privacy when it comes to online fraudsters and, and people that might want to seek your credit card details um, you know, for theft and things like that? Um, in regards to that, um, I've never had a problem with uh, either browser and um, and, and, uh, and that's kind of fine as well. Of course, um, the caveat with that again is that Google Chrome are in the information business, which means that they do track your browsing history and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, now, you can turn off your um, uh, tracking feed, you know, Google from tracking you as much as they do. Not many people know how to do this, and there is an article on it on my blog, ChristopherWare.com, which I will link to directly in the description below. Uh, I might do a video about it sometime if I can remember as well. It's not particularly difficult. I mean, any person who uses a computer can turn off the Google tracking features. It's just that... Um, uh, not many people know that the feature is even there, and even more people don't even know that Google track your browsing history at all. Um, and again, some people don't mind that you know don't mind Google tracking their browsing history because it means that their adverts are more customized and tailored to them. Um, so uh, it, you know, it, it's again, it's a horses for courses thing. It's what you're comfortable with. Um, when it comes to myself, I generally just like to practice being aware of of um, of what organizations are doing to earn money at my expense. So if something uh, is uh, provided to you for free, be it a browser or any other online service, um, one of the first questions I ask is, where are they making their money? And um, and am I, am I okay with that? Um, is, are they making it ethically? Are they making it, um, you know, is it like openly disclosed in their privacy policy or that kind of stuff? Um, 
And um, of course, Firefox makes its money through not only donations, but it also makes its money through um, Google, believe it or not, actually. When you use the Firefox search engine, you are using the Google search. Well, when you're using the Firefox search in the browser, it will take you to the Google search engine. And every time you click an advert, on the Google search engine, once you've used it through the Firefox browser, uh, Firefox get a very small cut of that advertising revenue for driving traffic in that particular direction. And of course, Google, um, they make all their money through AdSense and AdWords and so forth as well. So uh, both of them, um, Microsoft does offer better privacy because they are not in the business of gathering information for money, whereas Google are. That's about, uh, that's about where the only difference would be. Um, and I think that um, uh, an organization like Mozilla or slash Firefox uh, would be more active against things like um, NSA spying and, and, you know, government spying in on you. Uh, whereas I think Google have on the record actually cooperate. Or, I don't know if they've done it on the record or, or um, whether or not they've, it, it's been done without them knowing. But there has been uh, NSA surveillance gone through Google services before. Um... GNOME crashes more, no Firefox. Okay, so basically it's saying that um, there is a, a big debate about which crashes more, uh, Chrome or Firefox. Um, I have found Chrome to crash more. Um, and a lot of the time, in the majority of cases, it's usually an extension or an add-on, a browser add-on, that causes it to crash. Um, I, have, I don't even think I've remembered a time when Firefox has crashed... Uh, and I don't think I've even remember. I don't. I can't even remember the last time Firefox has crashed, and I can't remember the last time uh, Chrome has, has uh, crashed when it hasn't been an add-on, when it hasn't been you know like an add-on or extension, or it hasn't been like a website with a really badly written faulty script. Um, I've never seen Google Chrome crash um, as a result of it being a poorly developed browser. I, I, I guess maybe some of you might make the point that, well, if it allows a script to sort of run awry and crash your browser, then, um, or no, it doesn't even crash the browser, it, it crashes the, the tab and then you have to force close the tab. Um, and uh, not many people know this, but Google Chrome actually has a task manager function, which you can get to it through a shortcut key, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm sure a quick Google search will enlighten you. But um, you can then, you know, close tabs that are unresponsive and things like that. I'm sure that Firefox would suffer the same problem, but I do use Chrome a lot more than I use uh, Firefox. And for that, I will explain a little more about it later. Um, and it says both are not Internet Explorer 6. Um, because Internet Explorer 6 is the notoriously worst of the worst browsers. It was a nightmare to develop for because, um, if I remember correctly, there were like spacing issues as well. Um, so if you space something 10 pixels um, on uh, sort of Firefox or Chrome, or whatever, it, it, Internet Explorer might, um, you know, it pads out the uh, frames and the div tags and all that kind of differently in IE6, I think. Obviously, they've improved it since then. I think IE9, and I think are they up to IE10 now. But um, yeah, um, you know, I, you know, Internet Explorer is not as bad as it used to be, but IE6 is terrible, and none of neither. Firefox nor Chrome are anywhere near as bad as IE was and even IE is now because the big the big problem off the top of my head that I can think of with IE now is that the browser extensions just aren't there. You might be able to get the big ones, but you certainly can't get anything the slightest bit niche. Um, and I do use a lot of smaller developed um, browser extensions for Firefox and Chrome um, for just little tasks that not many people actually require, but if there's a browser extension or whatever handy, it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so to quickly sum up, why do I use I use uh, both browsers as you might expect as the as a someone who has developed a lot of websites in the past does a little bit of tinkering now and again, um, but yeah, I'm I'm in the habit of using both browsers and I use both syncing services and I've had um, a lot of success with both syncing services as well, um, and I would be happy to use either browser if one other wasn't available or if if one of the browsers um, sort of went in a direction that I didn't necessarily agree with. Um, and it's nice to have that choice of two solid browsers to use because nowadays a browser is a pretty integral part of an operating system. I'm still surprised that a browser as it currently stands on a desktop operating system still sits on top in the same way that any other piece of software does. And I'm surprised that it hasn't been more um, sort of, you know, more integrated in with um, 
with the operating system. I don't know how that comes into play when it comes to things like Windows 8 and 8.1, um, because I have Windows 7 on uh, one partition on one machine, I have Linux Mint on another, and then I've got Lubuntu on another, and then I've, of course I've got Android on my mobile device. So, um, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with, with uh, Windows 8 and 8.1. I will quite possibly, I'd be, I'd be mean to do a video where I talk about 8 and 8.1 because a lot of people I know have had experiences with 8 and 8.1 which are nightmarish to say the least. Um, but I'll leave that for another day. So anyway, again, why do I use Google Chrome more than Firefox? Well, first of all, uh, as, as I am as a big advocate for open source, um, the thing is about Linux is that it really doesn't support Flash very well. Um, so uh, one of the big benefits of Google Chrome is that it has integrated Flash support. And um, as a result of that, installing Google Chrome on Linux means that you don't have to worry about Adobe not supporting the Linux platform anymore. As well as that, Google Chrome also have uh, a profiles um, setup, which basically means that you can select uh, a profile. So all your login details um, for one sort of profile might be saved on one. Uh, I'm not explaining that particularly well. So as you guys know, I uh, run multiple YouTube channels. Um, and when you log into YouTube channels, you log in with your Google account. Now, one of the big problems with this is you can't really log into, say, two or three different YouTube channels uh, in the same browser instance. So it really does help to have three different browser instances, uh, effectively, th you know, sort of three Google Chrome windows that are completely separate and completely non-linked from each other. So you can log into uh, YouTube, three different YouTube channels in three different browser windows. You cannot do this in Firefox. You log into one, then you can log into one in the incognito mode, so you can effectively log into two different uh, YouTube or Google accounts, um, or two different accounts to any other uh, service as well, and um, and, and that's about it. Uh, Google Chrome, you can do it with an unlimited, at least uh, a lot, uh, of different Google accounts. Um, and that makes things a lot easier. It means that I can upload a video on my gaming channel, I can upload a video on this channel, I can upload a video on any of the other channels that I manage as part of my work. So it's, uh, and, and also it means you can answer comments, you can switch from one to the other really quickly, and that is an incredibly useful thing to do. I'm also, I also use a lot of Google services, again, as you guys well know, and um, just having a browser that kind of integrates that. There are a lot of hidden perks. There's a lot of things that you, you know that Google Chrome is going to be compatible with all the other Google services particularly well. Again, never had a problem with Firefox. Would be more than happy to just switch to Firefox if Google Chrome went in a direction. And I even appreciate the fact that Google Chrome release as much of their source code for that browser as possible in the form of Chromium, which again, gets bundled in with Linux distributions. You can get Google Chrome for Windows as well. It's not particularly popular because uh, you can get Chromium for um, Windows as well, but it's not particularly popular and it is, um, uh, it is bundled into an exe file by community members rather than Google itself, which is, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I guess it's just because Google released the source code, they don't do anything other than that. Um, but again, yeah, if you are a particular open source nut, but you really, really love the Google Chrome browser, um, then it might be worth having a look at Chromium because, um, again, Adobe maintained their um, Flash uh, plugin for uh, Windows, so you don't necessarily have that problem that you might do in Linux. Um, and I do. I do run um, three. I, I do the trifecta. I do Chrome, Chromium, and Firefox as well. Uh, Chromium as well also lets you sync up with your Google account. So there's that. Um, so uh, just to, again, quickly sum up, um, all are great browsers uh, except for Internet Explorer. Um, I use Google Chrome. I think it's the profiles thing more than anything else that um, that kind of pushes me over the edge. It's a feature that I use um, and that, that it's native to the browser makes me feel more comfortable, makes it feel more stable. Um, my computer's fast enough that system resources aren't a problem. Uh, people say that Google Chrome is faster, but from the tests that I've done, Google Chrome tends to use more memory. Uh, but again, there's not that much in it. And if uh, system resources are top of your list, I would probably go with like another browser entirely, like Midori or, or something like that. Um, and again, both of them do pay homage to the open source community. So, um, so even if Google Chrome isn't completely open source, most of it is in the form of Chromium. So, 
uh, like I say, there's really, of course, no right or wrong answer, as there very rarely, um, you know, as there really, very rarely is a right or wrong answer when it comes to software preferences. Because if there was a right answer, then there would, you know, the 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 uh, sort of Darwinian selection selection process of uh, software would kind of kick in, and and there would only be one browser if if it was clearly uh, head and shoulders above the rest. So. Let me know what you guys think down in the um, comment section below um, and whether or not you actually use uh, any browsers that I haven't mentioned here. And also, do any of you use Internet Explorer? Uh, please let us know in the comment section below so we can, of course, make fun of you. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, uh, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.